Now that we've gotten familiar with continuous probability distributions, we're going to move on to take a look at the most important continuous distribution in all of statistics, and that is the normal distribution. So the question today is simply, what is the normal distribution? The normal distribution is a probability density function that's got this beautiful equation of 1 over the standard deviation times the square root of 2 pi times e to the exponent of negative 1 half times x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation squared. Now, what's nice about the normal distribution is you do not need to know that formula. Instead, we're going to cheat and use a table to help us actually calculate what that formula is going to be equal to at various points. But what you should know about the normal distribution is the shape of the normal distribution just like the uniform distribution has a clear shape of the rectangle, the normal distribution has a clear bell shape to the curve. The normal distribution, if this is my x-axis, is a bell-shaped curve where the mean of the distribution falls right in the middle. And we describe the distribution as x tilde n for normal. And then we'll just state the mean and the standard deviation for the two arguments of the function. Now, the normal distribution has slightly different shapes based on the standard deviation. The smaller the standard deviation, the taller and skinnier it is. The larger the standard deviation, the shorter and fatter it is. But there's one special distribution, which we call the standard normal distribution. And when we're dealing with the standard normal, we won't use x, we'll use z. So we know we're talking about the standard normal distribution, which always has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And what's nice about the standard normal distribution is it has a table to help us find areas. This is what the table looks like. The table gives us values for z. Going down the first column, you see the first two digits, maybe 1.2. And then if I wanted 1.23, I'd go to the 3 on the next, and where those two overlapped, at the point 3907, I can get my area under the curve based on those z values. And we'll look more at using the table here in just a minute. But what we need to know for now is there's a table to help us find areas. And what we need to do quite often is we change between a regular normal curve which uses x values, and the standard normal curve, which uses z values, so that we can use the table in order to find the areas. The way we make that change is we use one of two equations. We either use z equals the x value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Or if we solve for x in that same equation, we end up with the mean 
plus the z value times the standard deviation. And with these two definitions, or these two formulas, it's important that we keep track of what's an x and what's a z. x has meaning in context. x might be the height of the average person. And so x, we're looking at a 64-inch person. z does not have context or meaning. z is simply the number of standard deviations we are from the mean. And once we have a z value, then we're able to go to the standard normal to find areas off the table. The table gives the area between a z value and the mean. And of course, the mean is 0. In other words, if I've got this standard normal curve here, the mean is always in the middle of 0. Off to the side, we've got a z value. The table gives the area between that z value and the mean of 0. So if we want to find probabilities, let's scroll up a bit and give us a little bit more room. If we want to find probabilities off this table, we'll have to decide what pieces we're interested in. First thing that we'll use is the fact that the curve is symmetric. In other words, the z table does not have any negative values on it. Fortunately, the negative values behave like the positive values because the curve is symmetric. Each half, the left and right side, has an area of 0.5. And we use this one less often, but the total area is 1.0 because it's a probability. So let's see if we can figure out how to use this information and use our table in order to calculate probabilities under the standard normal curve. Let's do some examples. For this example, if you look up, according to Google, the average ACT score is 20.8 with a standard deviation of 4.8. Let's do some examples off of this information. First, let's describe the distribution. For the distribution, our variable x is normally distributed. The mean is 20.8, and the standard deviation is 4.8. Let's find out the probability a student scores higher than 30. 
Now with all of these probability problems, it will always be easier to draw a picture first. So we'll draw a picture of our normal curve, our little bell-shaped curve. We'll put the mean right in the middle. The mean is an x value right now. So I'm going to label my first row. We're going to put x values on it. And then in the second row, we'll label what those equivalent z values are when we change them from x's to z's. That way, we don't get them mixed up. So the mean for our x value is 20.8. We want a student to score higher than 30. 30 is off to the right. And we want the area that's higher than 30, because the area is the probability. Well, let's change those x values into z's. We know the mean changes to 0. But the 30, we need to use our formula for z. z says take the x value, subtract the mean, and divide by the standard deviation. We have an x value of 30 minus 20.8 divided by the standard deviation of 4.8. We end up with a z value of 1.92. So 30 changes into a z value of 1.92. We will always round our z values to two decimal digits because that's going to match our standard normal table. So on our table, we need to find 1.92. I'm going to scroll down a bit to help us see it a little better. 1.9 going down the column. And then we want 1.92. And so when we combine those, we end up with them overlapping at 0.4726. That 0.4726 is the area between my z value and the mean. It's the white area, kind of in the center. We don't want the white area in the center. We want the tail off to the right of it. And this is where we use what we know about the normal distribution. We know the entire right side is 0.5. So the probability that some student scores higher than 30 is going to be equal to the 0.5 minus that white area that's been cut out of 0.4726 which leaves us with 0 0.0274. There's just shy of a 3% chance that a random student will have scored higher than 30. Let's try a few more of these so we can get really good at finding probabilities on this important normal distribution. Round number three. Let's find the probability. A student scores less than 25. Again, we'll draw a picture. The mean right in the middle of 20.8, that's an x value. We want to be less than 25, which is somewhere over here to the right. And we want to be less than, so we want the smaller part, or the left side, all of that area. In order to do that, we need to calculate our z values. We already know the mean will have a z value of 0. What we don't know is the z value of the 25. So we'll subtract the mean of 20.8. We'll divide by the standard deviation of 4.8. And we get 0.88. So now we have a z value of 0.88 that corresponds with the x value of 25. 0.88 is what we're going to look up in our table. In the table, we're looking for 0.88. So 0.88 
When we go down and across, we find out the probability there is 0 0.3106. 0 0.3106. And that, again, is the area, 0 0.3106, the area between the mean and that z value of 0.88. But this time, we also want not just that little bit, but the whole area to the side. That left side, we know, is 0.5. So when we want the probability that x is less than 25, this time we need an extra 0.5 added to the 0.3106 that we just found to get 0.8106. Or just over 81% of students score less than a 25 on the ACT. So you can see how the picture helps in the difference between example 2 and example 3. Example 2, we had to subtract from 0.5 to get the area that we wanted. Example 3, we had to add to 0.5 to get the area we wanted. Let's try another example to keep working on how the picture is going to help us calculate our probability. Let's find the probability a student scores between 15 and 23 on their ACT. So we draw a picture. The mean in the middle has an x value of 20.8. We want to be between 15 and 23. 15 is off to the left, and 23 is off to the right. We want the area between these two numbers. So now when we convert to a z value, we don't have to just change the mean to 0 and one other value. We have two other values that we need to convert to z values. So let's do that. For the 15, we take 15 minus the mean of 20.8 divided by the standard deviation of 4.8. That's going to give us a negative number, negative 1.21. But that's OK, because it's to the left of 0. It makes sense that a number to the left of 0 on the number line is negative. That's what a negative z value is. It just means we're to the left or smaller than the mean. When we do the 23, we should get a positive number. 23 divided by 0.8 divided by 4.8. And it's going to be positive because it's bigger than the mean. This turns out to be 0.46, a z value of 0.46. We're going to look up both of these values in the normal table. First, looking up the 1.21. It's negative, but that's OK because the curve is symmetrical. So we'll just look up the positive version, and it's going to have the same area on the other side, 1.21. 1.21. So when we do that, we end up with this center area of 0.3869. 0.3869 is the area between the mean and that z value, 0.3869. We still need to look up the z value of 0.46. So I'll do it in blue here, 0.46. When I go across, we end up with an area of 0.1772. So the area there is 0.1772. We want the area between those two numbers, which includes both halves. So when I want to find the probability that 15 is less than our score, which is less than 23, we need to combine both those pieces together, 0.3869 plus 0 0.1772 will give us a total area of 
1. There's just over a 56% chance that a student will score between 15 and 23. So sometimes, you see, we have to add pieces together. But that's not always the case either. Let's look at this example. Let's find the probability a student, just one student, scores between 18 and 20. Now, if we draw this picture with our mean in the center of 20.8, that's the next value. But now you notice 15, 18 and 20, 18 and 20 are both smaller than our mean. And we want the area between them. Of course, to get that area, we have to change them to a z value. The mean has a z value of 0, but we have to work to get the other two points. So first for the 18, 18 minus the mean of 20.8 divided by the standard deviation of 4.8. That's going to be equal to negative 0.58. So the z value there is negative 0.58. For the second one, the 20. Z is equal to 20 minus 20.8 divided by 4.8 is equal to negative 0.17. Negative 0.17. And we want the area between those. <clears throat> Going to our normal distribution, our first value was negative 0.58. 0.5. Eight. So we'll go over and down, and we find our first area is 0 0.2190, 0 0.2190. So this first one, 0 0.2190. Now it's important to note that's not just the shaded region. That goes all the way to the mean. It doesn't stop at the 20. The 2190 goes all the way to the mean. Does not stop at the 20. We still need to find the other piece, which is the negative 0.17. Doing this one in blue, the negative 0.17. Going down and across, we find an area of 0 0.675. That's area of 0 0.675, 0, 0.675. Sorry, forgot the 0, 0, 0.0675. And now we're ready to answer the question, what is the probability that 18 is less than our score, which is less than 20? Well, the 20.90 goes all the way to the mean, but we don't want the white space the 0675 that goes on the right side of the mean. So if we're going to cut out that white space, we just need to subtract. We have 0 0.2190 minus 0 0.0675. That's going to be 0 0.1515. Just over a 15% probability a student will score between 18 and 20. Let's do one last example, but let's make this one a little different. This time, we're going to find the third quartile of ACT scores. Remember, the third quartile, that's the value that's over 75%. What we're really asking to find is the 75th percentile. This is different than we were doing before. We're not saying, what's the probability of this number? We have the probability. We have the probability. 
0.75. We're looking for the x and the z values that give us 0.75. So let's draw our picture. We've got our mean of 20.8. That's an x. When it's a z, the mean is 0. And we're looking for some value out here. We'll call it k. Some value out there where the area below is a total of 75%. Well, the table's only going to give us the space between k and the mean. And actually, let's label k down below. We're going to make k a z value. We'll use that k to find the x value. We know the left side of the curve is 50% or 0.5. So the right side of the curve must be the remaining 0.25 of an area. But we know the area of 0.25. When we're given the area, do not go down the z values. Z's are not areas. Z's are a scale of the number of standard deviations we are from the mean. We need to look inside the body of the table for the area that we're given. We want 0.25. And if we kind of scan through our numbers, you'll see 0.25. An area of 0.25 is right in between these two numbers, between 2486 and 2517. Now, if it was closer to 1, I'd go with the one that's closer, but it's really right in the middle. So we'll call right in the middle 0.6 right in between 7 and 8. So we're going to call that 0 0.675, 0 0.675. So that k value is 0 0.675. How do we find the x value then? Well, we have that other formula we haven't used yet that says x is equal to the mean plus the number of standard deviations times the standard deviation. And that z is that z value we just found of 0.675. So if we plug in what we know, the score x, that's the 75th percentile or the third quartile, is the mean of 20.8 plus 0.675 times the standard deviation of 4.8. The mean is 24. I'm sorry, not the mean, but the x value, 24.04. The third quartile of ACT scores is about 24. That means a score of 24 is better than about 75% of all of the scores on the ACT. The normal distribution is truly the most important distribution you know how to use in all of probability. You need to know how to use the table, how to find the left side, the right side, what's in the tail, what's in the middle, how do you find percentiles, how do you use the table backwards. You need to be very comfortable and familiar with the normal distribution and how it works as we move forward in our study of probability. So take a look at the homework assignment. Practice a few of these important problems. In class, we're going to keep working with the normal distribution. And I will look forward to seeing you then.